Hello everyone. Now welcome to the final unit, unit 3 of uh, how the views of Singaporeans have changed uh, during the Japanese occupation. Now uh, in this uh, lesson as usual, you'll need your textbook. You'll also be needing a pair of highlighters and it'll be good if you can take down some important key things that we'll be discussing later. So in this unit, uh, we are going to learn uh, what are the people's views towards Singapore after the Japanese occupation. In the earlier two units, we have learned about what are the views of uh, people in Singapore before and during the Japanese occupation. So in this unit, you will learn about what are their views and how have their views changed after the Japanese occupation. In this uh, unit, there are essentially three big ideas that you need to know. The first is that uh, people's views change with uh, the return of the British. And there's also a growing discontent with the British over matters such as housing, uh, schools and other things. And finally, uh, there's also more and more demands on the British with, res with regards to uh, what has happened during the Japanese occupation. Now, this is the mind map uh, of the entire chapter. It's quite straightforward. You can see that there are three branches. Um, views towards the returning British power, growing discontent with the British, and growing demands on the British. Three kinds of demands. Demands for citizenship, demands for better treatment of local civil servants, and demands for political, uh, greater political involvement. Okay, so as usual, before we proceed, we need to take a look at some of the vocabulary that you'll be introduced to uh, in this chapter. First is the notion of trade unions. Now, trade unions are organizations that protect uh, workers' rights. Leaders from trade unions represent their union members to negotiate with employers for better pay and working conditions. Now, in Singapore, I think you might know of the NTUC, which stands for the National Trade Union Congress. So, it's the biggest uh, trade union in Singapore, representing workers. And I think you know that they run supermarkets, they run uh, uh, a resort in the east, and many more. Essentially, they're trying to provide for better working uh, conditions for workers. Second is uh, the word strike. Now, strike is a form of protest organized by employers where they stop work to demand more pay uh, on better working conditions from employers. So it's essentially a strike. It's like a form of boycott. It's a form of not working so as to make the employers listen to the demands of the workers. Then you have uh, 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 industries. Industries are groups of businesses that provide a particular good or service such as gas supplies, shipping and transport. So, for example, Singapore transport industry is made out of taxi, MRT, buses. is a whole group of businesses and just not just one of them. Then we have the word uh, petition. Now, to have a petition means uh, to go around asking people to sign all right, uh, to your wishes and to your um, uh, request and have it forwarded to the relevant authority. For example, student can petition to the school to request for, uh, for example, uh, a better canteen food, right? So you can gather signatures from your friend and pass it to our principal for him to consider. So petition is a request through a formal written uh, document. Then we have the word democratic. It is to form a government in which people exercise political control through representatives chosen by the people. So a democracy is a government where you choose your own leaders to represent your interests. In the words of um, uh, Abraham Lincoln, it is actually government for the people, by the people, and of the people. So that's democracy. Basically, you vote for the people you want to run the country, and uh, every five years there's an election, and uh, these people whom you vote to run the country will represent your interest. So the first uh, big idea is the return of the British. Now, the United States dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on the 6th and 9th August 1945. As a result of this devastation, the Japanese government decided to, to surrender shortly after. 
Japanese occupation came to an end in Singapore, and as a result, the British returned to Singapore. However, the British discovered that Singapore has changed. Now, in this picture, you can see uh, young people of Singapore who are very happy, uh, who are very happy to that the war is over. They are excited about the future, right? And they are also hoping that uh, when the British comes in, the British can fix many of the problems left behind by the Japanese. Now, this is a famous picture of the famous uh, British. Um, uh, his name is uh, Lord Louis Mountbatten and he is a, a very famous figure he is part of the royal family now he came to Singapore to declare that the Japanese had surrendered the war was over and the British would come in and uh, help the locals as you can see this picture was taken in front of our city hall there are a lot of uh, people witnessing the event it is a grand uh, occasion this is in front of the Padang and you can see in the photo that Lord Louis Mountbatten is flanked by very senior members of the British Army and police. Right? So the British are very clear that you know, when they come, they are going to take over the running of the country. And uh, the people are supposed to be encouraged by this. Now, so uh, one thing that the British did immediately was the setting up of the BMA or the British Military Administration to run Singapore when the war was over. However, we know that there were many, many problems facing Singapore. One of them is the black market uh, because uh, prices of goods are just so expensive. Right? Many people, uh, especially those who have some of these resources, decide to sell them in the black market instead of uh, the normal market. And there's also housing shortages because during the war, many houses got bombed. And many people uh, don't have houses and of course school shortages because students don't go to school so for five years of the war you have five primary one cohort that needs uh, schools places right but they don't have in this cartoon you can see that um, what I've explained earlier in this lesson and also in the last lesson which is there was insufficient food due to disruption of trade so the black market thrived and food continued to be sold at high prices. Um, house, houses were scarce. People had to live in cramped, overcrowded spaces. Rents were also high due to housing. And many children did not attend school during the Japanese occupation. They wanted to continue with the education when the British returned. However, there were insufficient schools, teachers, and textbooks to meet the demands for education. As I said earlier, every year, there's a new cohort of primary one. And after the war, suddenly the British were faced with five cohorts of primary one students looking for a place in primary school. So trade has been disrupted and businesses needed time to recover. Now, at the same time, there were some students who chose not to return to school. They entered the workforce only to find that the jobs were really limited. Okay, so now this is a picture of the Singapore River. Uh, at the end of the World War II, you can see that it's a lot of junk, a lot of rubbish, and people are scavenging by the river banks to look for food and things to eat. Now, this was how bad the situation is for many people uh, by the end of World War II. And the British. Uh, seem like they are not being able to do much in the first few years of their return. So uh, the BMA tried to solve the problems that people face. They cleared the harbour so that ships can come in, so that trade can resume because you know for Singapore our ports are important. Once we have the ports, ships can come in and they can bring food, they can bring things from overseas. So food and vegetables were brought in, uh, food rationing was resumed and schools were reopened. 62,000 school children went back to school in March 1946. So they continued food rationing because there was just not enough food, right? Okay.
So the BMA faced many constraints such as the lack of money and resources, uh, shortages in housing, jobs and essential items remain. Now some BMA officials took part in the black market activities uh, because there were just too much profits to be made there so many turned to black marketing. Problems such as unemployment and shortages of food and housing remain even after civilian government took over from the BMA. Next big idea is about the growing discontent with the British. Now, after the Japanese occupation, many workers joined trade unions in the hope of securing better wages and working conditions. Now, trade unions organized strikes to get workers to agree to better working conditions. However, at that time, people were all facing, also facing the problems of food and housing shortages. And with, with strikes, many people uh, suddenly discovered that when they are striking, they are not being paid by their bosses. And as a result, this creates other kinds of hardships. Now, the other discontent, besides strikes, there were protests involving Chinese middle school students. Now, they felt that the British government had, untreat had treated them unfairly over the years. So many protested to get more rights from the British government. And lastly, people's discontent with the British resulted also in the Mariah Herzog riots of December 1950. So one thing you can see now is that people are more open about, um, about protesting against the British. So what's the story of the Mariah Hertog riots? Well, Mariah Hertog was born to Dutch Eurasian parents. She came under the care of a Muslim woman during World War II. And Mariah Hertog was thus uh, raised as a Muslim. Right? So at the end of uh, uh, the Japanese occupation, Mariah's birth parents wanted to be reunited with Mariah and brought her... Uh, so they made a case to the British uh, authority and, and, and this led to a battle over Mariah's custody. Now after battle for Mariah's custody attracted much media attention or newspaper attention, this was especially so when the British judge ruled that Mariah was to be placed in a convent. The Jawi script newspaper Dawn released many controversial pictures and reports of Mariah being in a convent. The feelings of many Muslims were raised as a result. Eventually, the court ruled that Mariah was to be returned to her birth parents. Of course, many Muslims were angry with the Supreme Court's ruling. They felt that the British were unfair and had taken the side of the Dutch. As a result, riots broke out and rioters began to attack Europeans and Eurasians. And finally, the riots continued for three days. A curfew which lasted for two weeks was imposed. The situation only came under control after the troops were calling or the soldiers were calling. Uh, and about 18 people were killed and another 173 injured as a result of the riots. So here you can see Che Amina and, uh, and Mariah. Uh, Mar you can see how close Mariah is to Che Amina and how difficult is it for Che, che Amina to give up uh, Mariah uh, to her own natural parents. Okay, this slide tells you about uh, people protesting outside the Supreme Court and they were protesting <coughs> excuse me, they were protesting about the High Court's decision to give Mariah to the Dutch parents instead of giving her to custody to Che Amina. Alright, so um, one of the uh, growing demands on the British is a result of British colonial government treatment of local civil servants. So the local civil servants wanted better treatment because British colonial government had hired more locals into the civil service so as to allow British officials to recuperate in England. However, remaining British civil servants enjoy better pay, senior positions and in 1952 special family allowance. This angered many local civil servants as they felt that the British were being unfair in its treatment with the locals and they too demanded that the government raise their pay but the government did not. So this led to a lot of... So there was also demand for uh, political involvement. More political groups emerged after the Japanese occupation for push for, to push for more demands. So one example in 1945 is the Malayan Democratic Union. It was formed and comprised mainly of local-born English uh, educated Chinese, Indians, and Eurasians. 
They often discuss how they wanted Singapore to be governed. And they also know that one day the British will leave Singapore. So how then can they better run Singapore? And finally, uh, it's worth noting that the Japanese occupation has been a traumatic experience for many people in Singapore. Many now wanted a bigger say in how Singapore is being run. Many political groups emerged to contest with the British for power in shaping Singapore's political future. They wanted a Singapore, many people in Singapore wanted a Singapore that was free from colonial rule. <laughs>